Carter Hall, the Village of Hazel Crest regular board meeting at 7-11. Pledge of Allegiance, uh, Trustee Rias. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Wiseman, roll call, please. Trustee Grant. Here. Trustee uh, Ramsey. Present. Trustee Rogers. Present. Trustee Moore. Present. Trustee Rios. Present. Trustee Slate. Here. President Osberg. Pre Here. We have a quorum. A prayer, please. Let us all stand. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for another day. We thank you for the opportunity to come before you and asking your grace and mercy as we serve the citizens of Hazel Cross. Lord, we thank you for the little break that we had in the month of August. We are ready to go to represent the community as we always have. And Lord, we want to thank you for First Lady Osbury being back with us. We thank you for her complete and total healing. We thank you for all blessings uh, in your name. Amen. Amen. We do have a remote participation yes. from Trustee Grant. Do we have any correspondence? No, President Osborne. And then we have a presence report. First thing I have here is the proclamation recognizing the month of August, which we're here, as Minority Donor Awareness Month in the village of Hazelcrest. Whereas the village of Hazelcrest and our community continues to confront the challenge for organ and tissue donation, and whereas the awareness of a positive donation <coughs> culture and practice is a powerful way to save and enhance the lives of many people as possible through organ and tissue donation, among all people regardless of race, color, culture, class, language, faith, age, gender, sexual preference, or other apparent differences. And whereas August 28, 2018 marks Minority Dona Donor Awareness Month, and whereas during this period between August 1st, 2018 and August 31st, 2018, Gift of Hope was sponsored projects and programs to cre create a greater awareness and consciousness of the need to register to become an organ and tissue donor. Days of dialogue, artistic and cultural events, donor registration drives and special activities for all communities. And now therefore I, Bernard L. Osbury Jr., President of the Village of Hazelcrest, County of Cook, State of Illinois, we hereby proclaim August 2018 Gift of Hope Minority Donor Awareness Month in the Village of Hazelcrest and urge all citizens to support the program and projects conducted in the spirit of organ and tissue donations during this season and honor the organization of these activities on their com uh, commitment to create a positive culture about organ donation and tissue. Signed this day, 11th September 2018, Bernard L. Osbury, Jr. We do in our communities need, especially minority communities, need to actually be aware that uh, donors, organ, uh, donating your organs is a critical issue in our communities. Uh, a lot of people, because of not true facts, are fearful for actually signing donor cards. But uh, I could tell you that I've known a lot of people who have been saved by a kidney, a uh, heart transplant. Uh, those things are a significant need within our community. So we've got to get off that uh, fear of actually uh, donating our organs and be more proactive in our communities. We can save a lot of lives. Thank you. At this time, we're going to honor, you know, we had a wonderful Hazelnut Fest, right? All y'all agree? Yeah. 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 And so, what we did not get around, we had so much fun, we forgot to give trophies out. <laughs> 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 King, Queen, Princess, and Prince of the for the Royal Court of the Hazelnut Fest. Can, can the Royal Court of the Hazelnut Fest please come forward here, please? Give them a round of applause. Okay. Let's turn this on around here, right here. And I, can the board come down here also? Come on down here, out front. I get you tired of shooting over this dais. Make me look short. Very <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Mary, come on down. Oh, <laughs> Our king is Mr. Chelsea Lockett. Our queen is Jada Franks. Our prince, Troy Franks. Our princess is not here. She's on the way. She's on the way. Zaria Holloway. So, first, we had gift certificates for them. What we want for you? This is real money. Uh, <laughs> one for you. And one for you. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Mr. King, uh -huh. here you go, sir. because it's really hard to get sometimes to get young folks involved. I want to thank the parents, the grandparents, and family to actually get them out there and get involved and actually really dealing with the people. You know, sometimes kids can tend to be shy, but you guys were not shy at all. I knew you, 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 you performed, matter of fact. So it's been, it was a great, it was a great, great Asian Love Fest. What makes it even better that I do participate in the Asian Love Fest. So I want to thank them for, I want to thank you guys for really participating. And not only that, come to the dinner and just being out there, uh, it, it, it makes us all proud of you. So congratulations, and uh, continue to do what you do. All right? Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to get the 20-home block anybody up there tall. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so very much. Wait, 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 wait. Give our Royal Court another round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Did we do the chair? Chief, did we do the chair of Christmas once before this? We're, we're actually going to sign it tonight. So okay. Another item on our agenda is to adopt the shared principles of Hazelcrest Police Department. Uh, Chief, won't you explain a little bit about this? Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, so bring this out front in just a moment. Uh, the Illinois Police Chiefs Association and the Illinois NAACP spent about three years coming up with 10 shared principles. And the 10 shared principles, that they, they should be common sense things law enforcement and communities of color agree upon. And they're basically about the, the treatment of one another. And, uh, for, and once again, it goes both ways, not just the police to the community, but the community to the police. The first one is that, uh, Everybody's life is valuable. The next one is dignity and respect. Everybody deserves that. Uh, we're going to uh, reject discrimination. Uh, and we're going to, uh, the, the six pillars that the President's Task Force came up with, we're going to support those and also the procedural justice portion of that. Uh, community policing, relationships between law enforcement and communities. And it just goes on to talk about we should be working together. And there are 10 shared principles that we came up with, once again, with the NAACP. And what's happening now is, since it's been signed by those two entities, law enforcement agencies actually are spread all around the country now, are signing on to accept these principles for something within your respective police department. So the officers of the Hazelcrest Police Department all have copies of this. 
Uh, we have covered it with everybody, and these are the, expect the expectations that I have of them as a chief. Most of this stuff we're doing already, but it's, it's always good to make sure that we're on the same page with everything. So tonight, the Illinois Chiefs and NAACP actually sent us a poster, uh, and, and what happens is each chief signs off on it, and we're going to have that poster posted in the lobby of the Village Hall to let the community and everybody know that we are in agreement, the board, the mayor, and everyone on this 10 year principle. So that's what tonight is, the actual sign. All right, so we will sign that tonight, and I want to thank uh, NAACP, NAACP, and the uh, National is it the Illinois Chiefs Association yes, for actually bringing this forward. And also, what they've done, uh, we had a, a event where we brought them here to Governor State University. They actually did a, a seminar on the ten principles, and we had all the chiefs from the region come together, along with uh, school principals, mayors, and administrators, to discuss these uh, our principles that we want to stand by. So, thank you very much. So I'm going to sign this yep. Under the mayor's report, the final item, uh, I would like to have a moment a sign list for 9-11. 17 years ago, uh, we had an uh, attack on the country, our country, and we should never forget. So at this time, I ask for us to stand for a moment of silence. Manager's report. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for this opportunity to present. I'm going to pretty much it's, uh, it's a lot has been going on. Power to just keep it brief. Uh, definitely, once again, congratulations on a successful Hazel Night. It was one of my first, so I really appreciate that. Um, I was able to walk in the parade. I wasn't going to let the mayor beat me, so uh, afterwards I passed out, but it was okay. Uh, but it was really wonderful. Uh, also, I've had the opportunity to participate as well as the uh, Assistant Village Manager and Congressional Workshop held by um, Congressman Ross Kelly, which was really phenomenal. So uh, we're going to be following up with some of the federal agencies to see how to better support uh, the Village of Hazelcrest as we move forward with a variety of projects. Uh, particularly, we had a follow-up uh, with the Army Corps Engineers, the Assistant Village Manager, Jury and I, um, about actually securing some funds to move forward with some of the projects here. So we just need to make sure we get that in the pipeline accordingly, and we'll be working with Robson to make that happen. Um, in addition, I do 
appreciate the comment about um, Chantilly and one of the things that the police chief and I, as well as some um, trustees and others, we have been actually trying to um, brainstorm around how we can explore some revenue enhancement measures. So that will be forthcoming as well because um, if we're going to put them in the pocketbook, maybe that will modify the behavior accordingly. And I just want to also thank uh, the staff as well as we went through our auditing process for our comprehensive annual financial report. Um, we're not complete yet, nevertheless, uh, we are you know, almost there and I really appreciate the commitment, support, and the responses to our auditors in that process. And then uh, that's uh, pretty much what I'll, I'll leave with. Um, I mean, just one more point. Um, we will. We did have a couple meetings as well with, uh, you know, Advocate Hospital and, uh, you know, looking at some uh, things moving forward. But that will be more information will be revealed uh, later at a later date. Uh, that's forthcoming, and so we greatly appreciate that. And then also, I just want to also commend the board. Um, you took action before I was able to get here as village manager, and I commend you all because I, I had my first um, pension board meeting with the fire department, and the measures that you all took and put in place, as well as for the police. Is commendable uh, so greatly I greatly appreciate that and I'm sure they greatly appreciate that as well um, and I'm gonna leave it with that thank you thank you any legal uh, nothing that we need to talk about right now police thank you mayor board citizen just a couple things to bring you up to date uh, we just went through a, a testing process for our, our new hires uh, we actually had quite a good turnout we had uh, 80 applicants show up to the testing that we held at Hillcrest High School. Um, and the first portion of the testing is a physical agility test. Out of those 80 people that took the physical agility test, 36 passed, which qualified them to take the written test later on that afternoon. And out of those 36 people that took the written test, 24 passed. And uh, we've done background checks on about 12 of those folks now. And uh, as of yesterday, two of them started at the Chicago Police Academy. So uh, we have one person. Uh, that will be graduating from the Chicago Police Academy on the 21st of this month. Uh, both she and another gentleman that's here, a new officer here that came in as a lateral hire, will be here at the next board meeting so we can recognize them with a formal uh, swearing in. Uh, we're going to be sending four more people to the Police Academy in January as we continue to go through this list of, uh, of applicants. And, uh, and we will try to get ourselves up to speed with those numbers. That's all I have, sir. Okay. We're going to take a break in the action here for a second. Our princess has just walked in the door. Miss <laughs> Holloway. <laughs> Come on up here, ma'am. You get the stage all by yourself, isn't that one? identified about 10 streets that we're going to have, excuse me, I take that back, we have identified nine streets um, that we have scheduled for resurfacing um, for this year. Um, the streets that will, the streets that will be resurfaced, uh, residents may notice that there is a red no parking sign 
um, on that street. Uh, that sign only applies, there was some question about when that sign goes into effect. It only applies during the time that the work, that they're doing work on your street. So if no work is doing, is taking place on your street, um, you don't have to worry about um, not parking on your street. Um, in addition, I just received notification that the village of Hazelcrest has been awarded the, two, the 2018 community, de excuse me, 2018 community development block grant award from Cook County, uh, which will include resurfacing of deteriorated pavement and replacing to meet ADA compliance. Um, the streets, excuse me, the sidewalks that will be uh, impacted will be Page Avenue, 168th Street to 170th Street, Charleston Lane from Wood Street to Park Avenue. Western Avenue from 169th Street to 170th Street, Crane Avenue from 169th Street to 170th Street. Um, we recently had a new pump installed in our California um, lift station. Um, that's the lift station right at 175th in California. Um, so now we have two fully uh, workable pumps um, in that station, which I'm very excited, excited about because if one of our pumps gone, you may have noticed that we have to bring in uh, one of our mobile pumps to uh, help address uh, making sure that we keep the water levels correct over there. Um, we also um, is in the process of completing uh, repairs to fire hydrants that were identified as having problems in our 2017 uh, maintenance report. Um, we have all the fire hydrants replaced. We just we're just waiting on a few parts to repair, uh, maybe a couple of the other fire hydrants. Um, we continue to um, address the landscape and the restorations throughout the village. I think we completed about 28. Um, restoration in the last few months, uh, which is, which will, would also includes um, the pretty large water main break that we had um, next to the to the library. Um, we will continue to asphalt um, various streets um, throughout the village. Um, you may have noticed um, some streets we had to block off because our crews are actually asphalting, cutting and grinding, and then um, placing new asphalt um, to help maintain those streets. Um, We public work, uh, excuse me, th with the exception of three employees, all of our public work staff has completed CPR and AAD training, uh, which is real good from a safety standpoint. Uh, so that if any of our employees or we're able to provide assistance if someone goes into cardiac arrest or is, or is having a heart attack, uh, the public works team completed Irma fall protection training. Um, essentially giving guidelines and best practices for how to prevent falling from um, if you're working as far as a, a, a bucket while you're cutting trees or if you're on a roof of a facility doing works. It's very important that they know um, how to maintain their safety so everyone in public works has went through that training. Uh, last but not least, since we're referring to Hazelnut, um, I just want to say, um, you know, uh, thank the guys in Public Works uh, for helping to make um, 2018 Hazelnut, I think, a success, as well as the team here. Um, I know our guys came in for Public Works, you know, they had to work um, overtime and long hours throughout the day, and, and from the directors and everyone here, uh, you know, they had nothing but uh, complimentary things to say about the crew in Public Works, so I just want to acknowledge the work that they did in helping um, to make Hazelnut 2018 uh, a success. That concludes my report. Thank you. I have a question, please. Yes, um, Mr. Sawyer, could you please identify those nine streets that are going to be uh, resurfaced? Could you name them? Yes, I can, ma'am. Uh, Michael Court, Edgewater Drive to the cul -sac, Central Park Avenue, uh, Birch, Birchwood Drive to Laurel Lane, Locust Drive, Chestnut Drive to Laurel Lane, Maple Lane, Woodworth Place to Am Drive, Woodworth Place, Central Park Avenue to Am Drive. Oak Street, M Drive to Maple Lane, Hazel Lane, M Drive to Woodworth Place, 172nd Street, Holmes Avenue to California Avenue, and Central Park Avenue, 175th Street to 177th Street. And that Woodworth, is that the Woodworth in Potawatomi or the Woodworth in uh, the Highlands? Uh, let's see Pot Hills. Pot Hills. Yeah, yeah, Pot Hills, correct. Thank you. Hmm? Okay. Thank you, Dante. Uh, special services. Uh, thank you, President. Good evening, trustees and citizens. I have uh, several items. I just want to, I gave the trustees update of the inspection of service status report concerning uh, service recalls, new businesses and businesses coming for August and also up to September 10th, up to yesterday. Also tomorrow, a meeting with the reps of uh, RV Home Horizon. They're going to give me an update on the new 
homes that's going to be brought in on 169th and 02 Dixie Highway. They're behind because of new management coming in. They're supposed to take out at least nine or 11 homes there and replace them. Are the mobile homes? The mobile homes there. <coughs> Also, tomorrow morning, I'm, I'm in court for 169 Shade. That house has been uh, a blight upon the community because of overgrown vegetation and disrepair to the house in the garage. Uh, so it's a status follow up for that. And concerning our new code enforcement officer, I mean, opening rather, we've done inspections and we've done interviews for the new code enforcement officer. and. We just initiated that. That's the replacement for Rich, which moved to a closer position near his home in uh, Elgin. So that ends my report. All right, thank you. Human resources. Thank you, Mr. President, Board of Trustees. Uh, just have a few things. Um, with respect to human resources, I'm still working with RSM and Whipley to complete the annual audit. Uh, Mr. Manager just spoke uh, about, you know, we're toward the end, but we're not quite there. I'm also working with Irma to complete the 2019 revenue base worksheet. Uh, I am actually in the middle of now preparing the census for the, Hort the Horton Group, which is our benefits broker, in preparation for the uh, December open enrollment for employees. Um, we have had a number of new hires and uh, a number of people that have moved on within the last three or four months. So HR has been pretty busy with HR orientations, benefits enrollments, COBRA offerings. <coughs> Uh, termination of benefits and all of that stuff. It has been a very, very, very busy summer. Uh, I'm also working with the police department, public works, uh, community business relations, and inspectional services with recruiting. There's a part-time records clerk uh, position uh, that's being advertised, seasonal maintenance worker, pace driver coordinator, and code enforcement inspector position. Uh, we have uh, made an offer, and I'm sure Carolyn will probably speak to that, uh, to the driver coordinator candidate. Uh, and uh, we are actually making an offer for the code enforcement inspector position as well. And that's all I have. Thank you. And can I just chime in? In addition to th that as well, um, Ms. Gray has set up several managerial training that um, our staff will take place in the next couple of weeks um, through our benefits. So. You set that up, sir. Mm -hmm. Then you take that credit. No, it was a thank joint you. effort. So thank you. <laughs> thank both of you. Uh, community business relations. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you, everyone, for uh, the oh, help to participate in the Hazelnut Festival. A special yes, thank you to our mayor, the board, and all our departments and residents. I also want to ask, let everyone know that Ben Ramsey, our Hazelnut chairman, did an outstanding job. He worked day and night to try to make this a successful event. So many thanks to him. On August 15th, the village held a career fair, trade fair, and we had over 100 participants. Uh, the mayor, they wrote him up in their uh, trade magazine because they have not had a turnout as well as Hazelcrest in several years. So another uh, kudos to our mayor for allowing us to have a career fair was his idea, his trade fair, and we had over 100 participants that got information about the trades. That was a great success. On uh, Wednesday, August 19th, we're having a celebration for our beautification awards. We're going to do it a little different this year because most of the time, we, normally we have them come at a board meeting, but this, this time we're going to do a special uh, presentation lunch and forum in the evening just to come up for everyone who received the beautification award. Uh, it's, it's something special just for them. So if you're welcome to come out and join us, it would be here in the boardroom at 6 o'clock p.m. When is that again? On the 18th. September 18th. Okay. September 19th is a big, big celebration for our residents from 90 to 100 years old. We're going to celebrate life. Give them, let them smell their roses while they can smell them. We have a lady 103 years old, still take the bus, go get her hair done every week, and so she should be commended. So we're having a luncheon at 11 o'clock a.m. on Wednesday here in the senior room. On the 29th of September, 
I don't know if, who all saw the card, but it's National Family Fitness and Health Day. This is the month for fitness and health, and we're having the Kids Health Club Foundation is working in conjunction with South, Advocate South Suburban Hospital, and we're having a National Family Fitness and Health Day. It's going to be behind the uh, Advocate South Suburban Hospital. They have a, a half track back there starting at 8 o'clock registration, and it goes from not until 12 o'clock. There's all all kind of enjoyment. We have a helicopter coming in. We have games. We have a contest for five-year-olds and under. There's a walking starting at 9 o'clock for family members. And there's a, a chair massage, which is something I'm looking forward to. <laughs> so we ask everyone to please come out. You could go online and register uh, for this event. This is the first time we're holding this, but it's something we're very excited about. I also just want to give you a brief update. I attended Metra train station meeting and they're working hard to try to meet uh, a deadline this year. Metro, they, uh, had, they had ran into a little problem which threw them off their schedule but they're back on track now so please look forward to being uh, some construction in that area for a period of time but they will have notices up but we are proud to say that they are moving forward with the Metro station. That completes my report. Thank you. I'm sure they can pass some cars out. They need some cars for the National Health Fitness Day. Fire Department, please. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Anybody else want to talk for me? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make you last, but. <laughs> uh, basically, just a couple of things here. The uh, CPR and AED, we purchased a couple of months ago several new machines for AED. They'll be strategically placed throughout the village. And all of the employees that don't have training, the training's been 75% 75, 75 complete. So all we have to do is catch those that missed the earlier training and we'll be complete. The deadline was September 30th, and I think we're going to meet that deadline. So now all these units that we have in the building throughout the village, every village employee will know how to operate that. did as the we found out in the uh, payables that we did take delivery on a new station vehicle. It's in the process of having equipment installed and you'll probably see it on the street in the next week. And that's all I have for my report. Thank you, Chief. Uh, economic development. Uh, good evening, Mayor, and to each of you. The uh, economic development team has met with the following companies who have expressed interest in expanding their, their uh, businesses within the village of Hazelcrest uh, or um, just maybe perhaps bringing their businesses. And they have uh, just been exploring different locations and options and we've been coming up with some different strategies that may fit us well. And so uh, during the month of August and September, basically we've met with over 13 new businesses, potential new businesses that are interested and coming, I'll provide the board with a list of those and keep you uh, abreast of uh, you know what's going on as it relates to them coming into the village. As it re relates to those that we have um, uh, redevelopment agreements with, like AP Delhi, uh, they are actually their permit is being issued on tomorrow. I spoke with Inspectional Services, so they'll be getting their permit issued, and you'll be seeing that development process, you know, just starting to work its work uh, on 170th. So we're excited about that. And then also uh, uh, Armani Liquors, Armani Liquors, uh, we're waiting on their license to come through as well. So they're excited about it. Uh, we have a lot of great things happening within uh, the village and we're just super, uh, we're really looking forward to it. In our efforts to redevelop our entry and exit points in the village, we have also met with the following business owners within the village who have 25 years or more a vested interest to discuss possible redevelopment opportunities. So for those businesses that uh, sat at our corners, we're talking to them about redevelopment and things of that sort so that we can upgrade, help them to upgrade and reinvest back into those businesses as well. So we have already met with Oasis Beefhut, Ruby Thielen, uh, who's been there almost 40 years. 
And so we're looking to help her to do some things to just kind of brighten up her, her corner um, as we get ready to start this whole redevelopment process. And then RT Automotive at 167th and Dixie, them as well. So we'll be working uh, on the on the Hazelcrest proper end of town first, and then we'll move along throughout the village to continue those efforts. And then on today, uh, I had a meeting with Dominic uh, Tassi, who was the Deputy Director for Cook County Economic Development, who talked to us about, uh, he invited me out actually to talk to me about uh, funds that were available through Cook County uh, and he believes that Hazelcrest is a great place to invest in. We are one of the few towns that are not landlocked. And so they've expressed a great interest in helping us to redevelop uh, some of our areas. So those talks were went on. I had an hour scheduled meeting with them, and they went on for ab about three hours today. And uh, so at the end, of, at the conclusion of that meeting, we came up with the fact that they would be coming out here to take a tour of Hazelcrest, look at our TOD areas and then see what we could do collectively to bring some funds in to help us redevelop the areas that are needed. And so we are excited. Economic development has been working hard to just make sure that we're attracting the businesses that fit into our strategic plan as well as support our community at large. So thank you. That concludes my report as it relates to economic development. Sure. And so as it relates to um, the uh, construction projects that we have within the village that we are work, working on. Most of you know that we are in the midst of uh, uh, revitalizing a building that the village purchased at 3601 West 183rd Street to be the new home for our new municipal complex. And so in our efforts to do so, there has been a lot of planning uh, underway to just get to a point where we have actual preliminary renderings and drawings available that we're getting ready to release to the community. As well as the building at 100, uh, 17065 Dixie, which used to be the former South Suburban Hospital, that building is scheduled for demolition and you should see it demolished by the end of the month. The abatement process has already taken place and we're moving forward with that. So today I want to share with you all just some renderings that we have and they're preliminary but we want to share them with you all so that you know that this process is underway and the village is moving forward. Okay? <clears throat> today so we didn't get a chance to display them but we'll leave them up here so that you can see but this particular one is going to be our new village hall and this is going to be uh, located at one, uh, 3601 West 183rd Street so this is a preliminary rendering of it but it's a very close you can pass around it's not that many people here so we will be uh, you know building you can have them pass around uh, <coughs> your audience <coughs> And then this is the back side of it. We still have some work to do in the back side, which faces the lake, but there's still some work to do. And in this building, there'll be some banquet facilities that will be utilized for weddings and such. So it'll be a nice place for the village at large. <coughs> and then this, this particular rendering here is the uh, professional building that we're building at, one set, at 17065 Dixie Highway which used to be our former South Suburban Hospital, believe it or not. So we're actually taking that building down to the ground, leveling it, and then putting up a prefab building that will look like this. So that will be a nice, bright building on that side of town. Thank you. And then that's just a new, just another uh, rendering so that you can actually see what's going on. So again, the construction team meets every Wednesday 
uh, here at the village and so we are excited about what we're presenting. We're very cautious about uh, conscientious about budget and all the all of the aspects that are considered when actually doing a construction project. So we'll be giving you information on a monthly basis as it relates to our build out and we look forward to doing a groundbreaking ceremony very soon. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. At this time we're going to open the floor for uh, public participation for items that are on the agenda. Anything that's on the agenda that you want to address, which is the only thing on this, is the payable. Uh, you can address now. Can I get a motion to uh, open for public participation for items on the agenda? I move that we open for public participation for items on the agenda only. Second. Second. Be my trustee Ramsey, second my trustee Moore. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So if you see something on the agenda, which only thing on right now is the budget, I mean the payables. Are uh, you come and talk about that? But we will have you speak again when we read the payables. So if you don't, if there's nothing on the agenda, if you don't want to talk about the, uh, the payables, we're gonna close and open back up so you guys can talk about any other item. Okay? Anybody want to talk about the payables? Can I get a motion to close public participation for items on the agenda? A motion to close participation. Public participation for items on the agenda. Second. We move by Trustee Moore, second by Trustee Reyes. We close uh, public participation for items on the agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mayor. Mm. Couldn't hear you. <coughs> okay. Uh, penny items. Motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of July 24th, 2018. Sandra Slate. Uh, I move to that to approve the regular meeting minutes of July 24, 2018. Second. I move by Trustee Slade, second by Trustee Ramsey, to approve uh, the regular meeting minutes for July 24, 2018. Any discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Trustee Grant? Yes. Trustee Moore? Yes. Trustee... Ramsey. Yes. Trustee Reyes. Yes. Trustee Rogers. Yes. Trustee Slayton. Yes. Motion carries. Trustee Grant. Thank you, President Osbury. I move to approve account payable number 19-07. It is August 14, 2018 in the amount $476,787.82. <coughs> Accounts payable number 19-08, dated August 28, 2018, in the amount of $437,820.17. And account payable number 19-09, dated September 11, 2018, in the amount of $277,668.82. Second. The move by Trustee Grant, second by Trustee Slayton, to approve accounts payable number 1907, dated August 14, 2018, in the amount of $476,787.82. Accounts payable number 19-08, dated August 28, 2018, in the amount of $437,820.17. And accounts payable number 1909, dated September 11, 2018, in the amount of $277,668.86. Any discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Trustee Grant? Yes. Trustee Moore? Yes. Trustee Ramsey? Yes. <coughs> Trustee Reyes? Yes. Trustee Slayton? Yes. And Trustee Rogers? Yes. Motion carries. Trustee Moore? Thank you, President Osbury. I motion to postpone. <coughs> See. to postpone the amendment number one to the agreement dated November 19, 2015 for the 171st Street pressure reducing value and water treatment station, design and construction engineering. Second. We move Trustee Moore, second by Trustee Reyes. To uh, postpone the approved amendment number one to agreement dated November 19, 2015 for the 171st Street pressure reduced value and water transmission transfer station design and construction engineer. Any discussion on this item? Uh, yes, we need a date for the postponement. Is it postponed to the next meeting or is it yes, indefinite? To the next meeting. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Do you postpone to the next meeting? Any more discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Trustee Grant. 
Yes. Trusty Moore? Yes. Trusty Ramsey? Yes. Trusty Rears? Yes. Trusty Rogers? Yes. Trusty Slayton? Yes. Motion carried. Can I get a motion to open the floor to public participation for any item to be discussed? I move that we open the floor for public participation for any items of interest. Second. Been moved by Trustee Slayton, second by Trustee Reyes. Open the floor for public participation. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. At this, Aye. at this point, if you want to come forward to speak, this is the time to do so. Good evening, Mr. President and Village Trustees and other officials here. Paula Coffo, 16710 Wood Street. Um, I want to read this, and I've got a copy for both Chief Jackson and Chief Davis. Uh, and if Isaac, if you need a copy, I've got an extra one. On Saturday, September 1st, about 4.30 p.m., I heard the squealing of brakes being applied, then a horrific crash. I grabbed my cell phone and looked out my front window. I saw a white van facing east on Wood Street. I heard a woman screaming. I had my head. I dialed 911 and immediately told the dispatch I was at 167th Street in Hazelcrest. Ambulances were needed due to this woman's cries. The dispatcher asked me to hold while she put through the call to Hazelcrest. As I made my way down the front stairs, I saw a Hazelcrest SUV pull up. By this time, the dispatcher was back on the phone, and I told her the police squad was on the scene and that I heard the ambulance siren in the distance. The compact car had its passenger side quarter panel and both side doors pushed out. The EMTs got her on a stretcher. The Markham police vehicles kept the traffic from going southbound on wood. Two of our own units helped tur cars turn around and go back south, keeping the traffic flowing. The response time for this accident was very quick. Too few times our responders, our first responders are not thought about, but today I am making sure they get the praise they deserve. Well done, first responders, well done. Thank you so much, Paula. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much to President Osbury and everyone else here this evening. My name is Olivia Fox. And on behalf of Gift of Hope Organ and Tissue Donor Network, we would like to say thank you so much to the Village of Hazelcrest for acknowledging August as National Minority Donor Awareness Month. Um, for those of you who are not aware, Gift of Hope is the Organ and Tissue Donor Network for Illinois and Northwest Indiana. We're responsible for coordinating life-saving and life-enhancing organ and tissue donation with 180 hospitals in our service areas and in, in our service area and nine transplant centers. In addition to that, we're also responsible for public and professional education on the topic of organ and tissue donation. And so that's why we're here today and we're here to stay. Um, I was able to connect with President Osbury and he immediately told me that whatever, you know, wherever, whatever Hazelcrest needed from us, you know, we could have. And we need nothing but open arms to come here and to educate your residents and your community about the importance of organ and tissue donation because we can't make a decision about something if we don't know about the need and especially in our own community. Um, so again, thank you so much. We will be participating. We're so excited to be here at this event. Um, we will be there in support of the community and um, the president, and we can hope to continue to be at every event that we can and support in any way that we can uh, to support this community. So I just want to leave you guys with a couple of facts. Currently in Illinois, there are over 4,600 people waiting for a life-saving and life-enhancing organ tissue donation. 38% of those people are African American. So it's really important that we we understand why these dialysis centers are popping up on every corner in our communities and African American and different minority communities um, and so that's why we're here and again we'll continue to be here and to provide public education so I think Miss Carter is going to be my girl I have my card and my information uh, we want to be involved and support whatever we can here in Hazelcrest so thank you again for honoring August as Minority Donor Awareness Month. Thank you so much Ms. Fox. I have known this young lady and her family since she was little, and it just warms my heart to see her as an adult doing such a courageous thing. So thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you.
Hello. Hi. To everybody on the board. <laughs> I've been here before. A lot of you know me. I'm a resident of Hazel. I've been a resident of Hazel Crest for 30 years. And what I'm discussing today, from last year, I had a handful of service requests for mice bait being placed in the alleys. That was done for brush pickup, for brush taking down off the corner where the kids are walking past. It was so high and all out into the alley that it was really a hazard to anyone walking past there. That was done, and it was done very well. So I congratulate Public Works or Inspectional Services, whoever did the job. This year, whoever came out to do that corner lot, they must have been in a hurry because it couldn't have been the same people that were entrusted last year to do the job because it looks a mess. And we're trying to sell houses on that 169th Street corner that's across from that lot. And we're trying to sell two houses there. And it doesn't look good to look at all that brush. And they also have brush in the alley instead of in the front of the house so it could be picked up on brush pickup day. Also in the alley, going north or going south. If you're going south through the alley, you have to swerve around a big old brush that was cut down last year. I don't know where it came from, but it's so big it looked like it's connecting with the Anthony side of the street with their brush that's coming from their lot. Residents all received a letter regarding brush pickup from inspectional services, brush, the uh, recycling bins, and garbage can bins. Having lids on them, removing them from in front of your house if that's where you have to place your recycling bins or garbage can bins. That was implemented, but I see a lot of it now. And the only reason why I see a lot of it is I'm retired right now. So I drive around and look. And plus I walk my alley. Her and I both walk the alley. And that's why I know that the mice bait was implemented because I saw signs of it. And the brush that was on that corner that the house had blown up that was on that corner that was so bad. That was taken care of that year. But this year, like I said, whoever contracted to do that, they did not do a good job at all. It makes our street look bad, which is Orchard Ridge. We're on 168th of Orchard Ridge. And we, the alley that I'm talking about is right next to Anthony. Anthony and Orchard Ridge share this alley. The people are not coming out, the residents are not coming out to tear down, take off the brush, off their fences. I had asked one lady that I would take it down, if she would have someone pick it up, take it to the front on brush pickup day. So what's we gonna do? Uh, I know about the house that blew, blew up, I know it's a big open area there. So we have uh, special services and uh, Dante from Public Works. They go by there. Uh, you familiar with the area, both of you guys? No, no. We'll look at it. Okay. And we'll definitely take a look at that and look at the bait situation before the weather changes. Okay. And so uh, so look out for them. You know, they'll be there. Because, and, like I said, going south through the alley, you have to swerve right. to miss that brush. And then we're going to talk to those residents. Like you said, we did we did put in, uh, notices in the residents' doors and told them they're responsible for bringing their brush, pick up around, brush you, and also making sure they garbage containers are well, closed. Well, everyone received yeah. a letter. I know. 
So we'll, we will enforce that. So we will make sure uh, we'll, we'll go out the process again. We'll make sure we send them another letter because that's not a hard thing to do. I think and what we'll it is through. is that it's not, you know, follow any through. consequences yeah. behind well, it. Well, we, we'll make sure we got some consequences behind <laughs> okay. it. Okay. You know I can find you. I know you can. <laughs> she would like to say something. Yes. Yes, hi. I live on Orchard Ridge, too. And I asked several years ago about having a handicap sign put in front of my house. My husband is disabled. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I can't park in front of my house. And to get his power chair out of the back of the van is very difficult. Well, we have a special service because there's a process with that. So we we'll talk to the police department okay. and the special I, services and they'll come and talk to the family and we'll tell you what the process is that we have to go through. It is a state process that we have to go through, through that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what I was told yeah. at the zone meeting, but yeah. he also told me I should come here. Yeah, it was good. And Who told you that? No, uh, told you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell us. Okay. I won't tell secrets. <laughs> no, but we will, but we will uh, come back, make sure we get by there and try to get that you information. You know, every town need. I've been in, yeah. there's been handicap signs yeah, in we front just of have residents. To, yeah, we have, to, we have to process, through, process it through the state. So we have to get all your information and then process it, then they allow us to do that. Okay. One Not last a problem. thing, like I spoke with the chief about, we do have the policing, the community policing meeting the third Thursday of every month. Right. That needs to be put out again because evidently it's not. It's, it's been yeah. A lot of people thought it because yeah. nobody is coming but about five people and we're at three of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we always he's always willing to put that information out, so that's an easy ask. Let everybody inform okay. their neighbors. That that the meeting's the still there. That, we're, <laughs> that we are still having the meetings the third Thursday of every month. Thank you, and I thank you guys for that because you guys thank always you. involved. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Greg Washington. I reside at 3425 Maple Lane. Um, I just wanted to inform the citizens of Hazelcrest, the Chicago area project will be hosting our, our first annual Hazelcrest Information Lab. Um, we will be distributing information on different projects that are happening throughout the community, different programs that are happening throughout the community. Plus, we are inviting other organizations throughout the Southland to come and participate. And it's going to be on September 26, 5 to 6, at the Hazelcrest Park District Building. Thank you. Make sure you let Carol. What is that? Ms. Carter, no. What you call it again? The Chicago. I'm working with the, the Chicago Area Project. Okay. Like your shirt. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. Also, in much lighter news, um, the Hazelcrest Open Lands will be having our, I think this is either our third or fourth annual Johnny Appleseed birthday party on June, I mean, not June, but September 29th. Um, I know it starts at 12, and it's to be from 12 to 2. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I want to thank everyone for coming up today. We are working on some ordinances to address some issues in the, in the community. And so we will be working on that, that project. Can I get a motion to close public participation? I move to close public participation. I second. Participation. Been moved by Trustee Moore, second by Trustee Riz. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Yeah. Again, I want to thank everyone for coming out this evening. Uh, we're doing some great things in Hazelcrest, and, and the issues that we do have, I'm, I'm glad you guys come and let us know about it. A lot of times people just kind of let things simmer, and then they come and they're upset, and we don't really know what they're set, upset about. But we want you to come to the meetings and let us know when there's a problem. We want you to call us before the meetings if you can to let you know we have problems. And if we don't take care of the problem at that time, hey, come to the meetings and let us know. Keep us on our P's and Q's uh, because it's, you know, we're, we're your workers. Uh, and we appreciate all of you, most of the time, not all the time. <laughs> but, uh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're in the media. Uh, so thank you guys very, very much. Ms. Fox, thank you very much. And I hope you guys come out for the National Health and Fitness Day. We do need to get our citizens moving, especially our young folks. It should be a great event, a lot of fun. We're giving away uh, gift certificates. And we have some great competitions for the youth to participate in. And also for the uh, mature adults. 
So have a great evening. Thank you for coming out. Stay here Crest Proud. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Remove my trustee Rogers. Second my trustee Slayton. All in favor? Aye. We're adjourned. Aye.